Last year, about this time in a season of winter of our life, the Lord brought a man of God and ministered tremendously to us. And I'm going to have the Bishop of Apostolic Tabernacle to come, and he's going to introduce our speaker. Thank you, Pastor Kobe. Um, praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'd like to thank you for bearing with us through our phase of construction. But I've never found repairing anything has ever stopped God from doing anything. Amen. After all, he's still working on me. I thought I could amen on that. God always works through construction. He tears us down just to build us all the way back up. Amen. Really want to invite you to be in here with us tomorrow at 6. 6.15, prayer starts. Service starts promptly at 7. Would everybody stand, please? Several years ago, while preaching a singles conference in Atlanta, Georgia, I had the distinct pleasure of meeting Dr. Jeffers after hearing a lot about him. And then we preached several conferences together, men's conferences, and uh, singles conferences and as such. And I found him to be a very spiritual man and a very dynamic minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ. He's been preaching since the age of 12 and his ministry spans a 32 year time limit. He began full time traveling in 1991 and is now also a full time evangelist and the overseer of the worship center of Jesus Christ where his brother in law and sister are pastors. For some of you, it's an induction. Other you, I present to you a man of God, a man for this hour, Dr. Gerald Jeffers. Come and preach to us. Sir. Would you receive your Bibles right now as you remain standing in honor to the word of the Lord? And we take our tradition of standing to the word after Ezra the priest the Bible said that when Ezra had the word read he had it read from morning until noon and the people stood while the word of God was read behind a wooden pulpit and so as we would stand for any dignitary the Bible said the word is God we stand for God's word can you say amen to that Luke chapter 10 Luke chapter 10 and reading in verse 30. Luke chapter 10, verse 30, as you're turning there, we want to thank God so much for Pastor Emery. We appreciate him and having the privilege of meeting with him and amen, fellowshipping with him, love him very much and respect him. And uh, I want you to know I love him in spite of the fact that he ate my food last night. <laughs> and he just had to come in my face licking his fingers. I thought he was good too. <laughs> We appreciate him, the prophet Arcovio. We love this man. Respect the gift that God has placed within him. Amen. And we, we acknowledge those things that God has foreordained. I've never had the privilege of meeting Sister Emery before, but we had the chance to go out last night. And truly, it's a privilege and an honor to know such a woman of God. And we thank God for her in this house tonight. Amen. That's right. Amen. Praise God. Sister Arcovio, we love you. We thank God for you. Amen. It's good to see and be with you all again. Uh, that God will allow us to come together. What a privilege. What an honor. Luke chapter 10, verse 30. If you have it, would you say glory? glory. Let's read this together. Just verse 30. And Jesus answering said, A certain man went down from Jer Jerusalem to Jericho, and fell among thieves, which stripped him of his raiment, wounded him, and departed, leaving him half. Can we read that one more time? Jesus answering said, a certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho, fell among thieves, which stripped him of his raiment, wounded him, departed, leaving him I 
just want to speak to you on this subject tonight. Healing on the Jericho Road. Healing on the Jericho Road. Would you set your Bibles down a moment and let's just lift our hands and begin to worship. take our time tonight and begin to speak those things that God has spoken. I don't know about you, but I've heard many sermons. I've been saved since the age of nine. And I'm now 44. And, and uh, you hear a lot of preaching, a lot of teaching. Thank God for it. But you come to a point where you recognize that you need more than just some preaching or some teaching. You've got to hear the mind of God. It's what God is saying to who he was saying it to. The way he wants it said is what we become after. 